Judges at some point. Um, chapter 4. The reason we're studying um, this chapter, or better, the person which is featured in this chapter and not Thessalonians because this morning as you all know we had the dedication of Deborah I spoke about Deborah and uh, this eve today right now we, we, we speak again about Deborah maybe from a different um, angle I see how the Lord will lead us um, so that we will continue synchronized in our teaching of First Thessalonians so God willing next week we will continue both services um, the same study um, uh, because then that will affect as well our Bible study. So Deborah <coughs> is one of the ten prophetesses, female prophets, which are named in the Bible. There are plenty of more, there are many more female prophetesses, but are not mentioned by name, but there are 10 that are. Two of them were false prophets, but certainly Deborah was not. Deborah lived in a particular time of Israelite history. We know that the book of Judges is placed in a period of time after Joshua died. Those that were led by Joshua died, and suddenly Israel without people who were faithful to Yahweh, turned to serve the Canaanite gods. The book of Joshua also is set in a period of time where God was rising judges in different times to liberate the Israelites from the oppression of the Canaanite kings. The Bible, the book of Joshua, also speaks about there was, in those days, no king, and everybody did whatever he pleased. Whatever anyone thought was good, they did it because they had no law. And therefore, we read in the book of Judges how people started making up their own gods and every family had its own gods and people making their own priests and so forth. The time of Deborah is very similar to our own time. We live in a period of time where the, the, the culture of Christianity and the strength of Christianity in our country and in Europe 
has gone away. We live in a generation that as if people no longer know about the sanctity of God. Some people of my age and maybe those who are in their 40s, 30s are in that transition that when these children are in their 20s, the culture after them will be in a situation, what's Christianity? What about Christianity? What is Christianity? Thinking about these things, knowing that there was no king, as if there is no today, the moral fiber in the islands, supposedly Christian influence. The Christianity, not the evangelical Christianity, Christianity I'm talking about, about I'm referring to the Roman church, it has no fiber, no strength to resist the evil that is entering slowly but surely and in sometimes fast and surely in our land. We can see many common things, especially now coming to the evangelical and Pentecostal church, where everybody is making his own God. People didn't have to go to the temple to worship because they had their own God in their sitting room. Maybe evangelicals will not manufacture a God of gold or silver, but they can go to the TV and switch on and have their favorite preacher, which most, most of the time they bubble, bubbling up false doctrine, and watch that on TV instead of obeying God's word and meet together to encourage one another. So we're in that kind of transition where people don't need to go to church, but I can go on Facebook and I can go on uh, YouTube and I can go on this channel or the other. I don't, have to, I don't have to go to church. Not mentioning um, worshiping the sun uh, that instead of coming to church, we go uh, to the beach. So we're in a time where we need to really find ourselves and ask the question, who will rise up and be a Deborah in our times? Who was Deborah? Deborah was a prophetess, the wife of Lapitot. Now, because of the sake of time, um, I was going to read from verse 1 to 10, but I will re refer to the, pa to the passages. Verse 4, at the time Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidot, was judging Israel. So we are seeing here Deborah's calling. Deborah was called by God as a prophet, as a judge, and as we continue reading, we'll find that she was also a military leader, and in chapter 5, we find out that she was also a worship leader. Four aspects of her calling. Once again, I will ask the church, what is your calling? If we all grumble about what's happening in our country because of this law passing and about this law going to pass and the fear of certain laws will be passed or so forth, what are you doing by the calling that God gave you to do something about what's going on? Because church is important, that although we meet together in a room once or twice a week, maybe three times, if you attend the prayers, and then 
forget all about the calling that God has given you of who you are, what makes you, you, filled with the Holy Spirit. Deborah was a female living in a culture of sin in an oppressed nation, military oppressed nation. And as a woman, she was a leader contrary kind of of the culture. She didn't say, I cannot do this. My husband has to do this because I am a woman. No, she was married to Lapidoth. Now, we don't know much about Lapidoth except his name. And many times in the Bible, and I don't want to make a big thing out of it, but the names in the Bible many times are speaking of the character of the holder of that name. And Lapidoth means the flesh, the illumination of a thunder. <coughs> so you have the thunder, you have the lightning. I should have said lightning. You have the lightning and you have the thunder and you have that flash of light illuminating. That was her husband. And I don't want to make much of that, but I just want to mention that Deborah, whose name is Honeybee, had a lightning illuminating kind of husband definitely supporting her ministry. Deborah, because she had this calling of God and was obedient to that calling. People went from, from all over Israel, occupied Israel by Sisera, the commander-in-chief of Jabin, or Gabin, who had 900 iron chariots. That iron chariot or an iron, iron chariot is the equivalent of what today we would call a battle tank. So he had this infantry, this strong infantry, keeping a nation subdued and people suffering with its military. And God speaks to Deborah to call Barak. Now we don't know about Barak, where he comes from, but Barak means lightning. So here you are. See the people that surrounded Deborah. And she calls him. And Barak goes because of her reputation. Barak son of Obinamam, and I continue and say, and Deborah says to him, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali in the tribe of Zebulun, and I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin, or Gabin, my Jabin, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon with his chariots and his troops. And I will give him into your hand. So here you are, a woman prophetess, a judge, a worship leader. A military oriented person. And she calls this man Barak lightning. And she says, this is what God said. He could say, come on, woman, where did you get this from? No, he did not argue. But he knew he needed strength. 
He knew God spoke, but he still needed strength. And he says, if you go with me, I will do it. Praise God. See the power, the spiritual power of Deborah. This is the spiritual power in a person, whether it's a woman, whether it's a man, that we need today. You know that the story ended that Israel won the war. As many times outnumbered, outweaponed, and Israel wins the war. It happens all the time, all the time, even today. Because God, the God of Israel, is with them. Barak didn't question what God is calling him for when he heard the words of the prophet speaking to him. And we should not question God in any way when we read his word or it's preached to us or spoken to us for a particular direction in life. If we are to do something which might affect this nation, each one of us must walk in the calling, be useful for God in whatever calling that God has given us, the church. We are the light of the world. That's who we are. We can't hide behind Facebook. We can't hide in our four walls. We need to be out and being the light by not just wearing t-shirts, I love Jesus or whatever. By living who you are as a child of God, be who you are as a son of God, filled with the spirit of the living God, and speak for the word without fear. Deborah was not afraid, and Barach, and those 10,000 soldiers that went with him. Imagine living in that culture, remember, a land that God was forgotten. Every now and then a prophet rises up like Deborah. Oppressed by a military power that everybody feared. And 10,000 people respond to Barak because they believed they could do something under that spiritual leadership. They followed they moved on. They didn't see how small they are and under-weaponized, under-armed. They went and overcame, and even Cesare was killed by a woman. And the mighty Canaanite army lost its hand from the Jewish nation. So, brothers and sisters, time is always against us. There are three things in Deborah's character. She was obedient. The first thing that comes to mind, she didn't care if the whole culture was against her. She spoke out. She spoke on behalf of God. She was a worshiper of God and she knew God's word. It's important that God's word is not something we read every morning if somebody puts on scripture on Facebook. What is your personal relationship with the word of God? Earlier I mentioned that there are 10 I, there could be more, you know, I may have missed one, or but whatever. There are about ten prophetesses mentioned in the Bible. Two of them are false. Most of them we find something about them, about Mrs. Isaiah, we find nothing. 
But there was a young virgin called Mary, who we know is the mother of Jesus. And we know about the miracle of the conception and her obedience to God. Let your will be done, she said, even if she was in danger. If, if Joseph, her husband, said, Oi, that's not my son, prove it by DNA, he's not my son. He could have said that and she'd be stoned, much like that. But Mary knew God's word. And th how do I know she knew God's word? Yesterday I went through her song. It's called the Magnificat. We, we refer to it <coughs> as the Magnificat. Is that mine? And I found there could be more. In those 11 verses, I found 15 Old Testament references. So imagine she receives the greetings from her cousin Elizabeth, whose husband was the high priest. And she burst out in worship. And she didn't worship with the latest, you know, songs. She went to the Old Testament. She worshipped God and she used the scripture to worship God with. Real worship, using the word of God. There's no replacement for that. Today, this, most of the songs are self-improvement and self this, and I can't do this and the other. Worshiping God with his own word, the best type of worship. In 15 references in 11 verses from the Old Testament. And she mentions first Samuel, she mentions second Samuel, she mentions Job, Micaiah, Isaiah. Maybe another one. I can't remember now. I left my notes at home. So Deborah knew God's word. Chapter 5 shows her heart of worship. And thank God for the deliverance that he has given them. We will have that opportunity to praise God for the deliverance of the evil that the politicians want to bring on us. And if not, because after all, we do believe this is also a sign of the end times. But should we have the opportunity to praise God for even some of those prominent people pushing forward the atrocities of life and the morality Maybe even one of them finds Jesus. I have a picture of one of them right now. Yesterday, I just wanted to go into the TV and grab his neck. <coughs> Maybe I should pray for that person instead of wishing God's... That's what I pray. Should God burn him alive? That's what I said. You see, I'm not holier than you are. Maybe we should pray for these people instead of getting angry at them. I don't know. I mean, I know it's difficult. And we know that God's plan has to be done. But if one of those people gets saved, can you imagine what God can do? But can we pray for these people? Can we pray? Can we encourage? I mean, you need to encourage me to pray for them. Definitely. Because once you open the news, you... Brum, So oh, therefore, brothers and sisters, so we can close. She was obedient, she was courageous, and she stood firm in her faith. Paul calls us to remain firm in our faith. When I say Paul, I mean the Holy Spirit after all. What can we do? to be a Deborah or have the character of Deborah today. Mm. 
knowing God's word, knowing God, knowing our calling, being obedient, be courageous, stand firm, and never be afraid of how big our enemy is. We can be a Deborah, we can be a Barak, and we can be one of those 10,000 warriors that faced the 900 iron chariots. Whatever, we must be obedient to God's calling. God bless you. Hallelujah. As we're about to close uh, this service, um, I would like to invite Grazio to, to pray, and Alfred will, uh, will give us the benediction. Meanwhile, uh, we meet on Tuesday for Bible study at 7, and the prayer is at half past 6. Um, uh, yeah, Eva, Eva, Tuesday is the first Tuesday of the month, so it's uh, our day um, of fasting. And uh, then we meet uh, Saturday for morning prayers. Um, uh, Friday, there's the women's meeting, right, Christine? Yes, there will be the women's meeting. Uh, so uh, meanwhile, God bless you all. Um, I'm blessed to see David, too, um, <laughs> with us today. Um, we thank God for, for, for your recovery. So uh, God bless you all. And so uh, grazie and uh, Alfred will lead the closing. Thank you. Good morning, church. Uh, we try to make a resume of what has been said this morning. It would take a long time, so I'll keep it brief. But the main aspect, in my opinion, was the word of God. Our sister started by saying that the Lord lives in us. And the reason he lives in us, because he is holy and he made us holy. If we don't remain holy, he won't live in us anymore. So to remain holy, in conclusion, we, like the pastor just said, it's still fresh in our mind, is to push forward the gospel, to be brave, to be courageous, to be distinct, to focus on the word, to be clear, encourage people, be obedient, be a living sacrifice, in other words. So let us pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we remain holy, we grow in his grace, and we'll be able to build the body of Christ so that together, will make the difference not only in our country, but in the kingdom of God. God bless you all. Amen. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen.